Hello guys. So today I'm going to talk about sacral inner authority. And it is a, yeah, <laughs> it is a tricky one. Uh, because quite a lot of times the patterns that are described uh, when people talk about this authority actually do not correspond to the experience that you might have. For example, I have sacral authority myself. And for the first seven years of my experiment, I didn't have zero uh, response when I was asked something just none. There was no verbal response, there were no sounds, there wasn't even a feeling. Nothing. And I had to really work on it <laughs> to actually kind of unlock it and to learn different ways how can I utilize it given my circumstances. Later I found the ways to make it work. I now have uh, the feelings when I'm asked something, but it was kind of a journey. But okay, my goal here is to give you practical keys how to use it. So first of all, uh, the main thing you have to understand is that sacral authority it basically is very primitive. Uh, you, as a person who has it, you always exist in one of two states. You are either sacrally frustrated or you are in the state of sacral satisfaction. Each, sec each second of your life you are either frustrated or satisfied. And these are the things you can feel in your body without any need for questions without any need for anybody to ask you anything or for you to kind of mentally respond to something be it a question or something else it is here every second so one of the first things you can do is to just learn to notice what is going on in your body just look at how it feels when you do the things that you naturally do every day even the basic ones what I have found and what you may find is that uh, each second I am either in the feeling of satisfaction, in the feeling of sacral bliss, or I'm in frustration. Uh, it is a feeling that can be maybe tricky for some people to kind of get quickly, uh, because uh, on one hand it is felt in the whole body, yes. On the other hand it has an epicenter in the sacral region, which is basically the width of your four fingers under your navel, inside of the body in the center of it. There is this uh, the epicenter of the sacral center, and from out there this uh, feeling kind of irradiates to your whole body. People, pe different people have different sensitivities, so it might be hard for some people to notice these things. Some people notice them very quickly. But first of all, this is the first thing you can do to actually uh, look for it, yeah, to basically check for it. So what is it that you feel in your body when you do whatever you do? Uh, one of the very simple exercises I, I that is kind of naturally did uh, was when I would go to the sh uh, supermarket and I have to buy some milk and I will, I have to choose will I buy this type of milk or that type of milk what I did I would just take the pack pocket packet, pocket packet. <laughs> I will just take the packet uh, and I will feel okay so what is it that, that I feel right now when I'm taking it off the shelf what do I feel right now when I put it back what do I feel when I uh, take a different type of milk? What do I feel when I put it back? So the main goal here is to learn to contrast your feelings. So you can uh, do... For, oh, you have some kind of choice that you have to make right now. Am I... <laughs> do I really want to take this milk? This type of milk or that type of milk? Or no type at all? You do this, you do that, you try walking away from the shelf without taking any milk, and you look, okay, what do I feel with each option what are my options <laughs> so to say of feeling when I do this okay and you contrast them against each other and you just look at what feels good what feels whole what brings you this feeling of pleasure of joy because actually sacral satisfaction is not a thing that comes after your decision it is a feeling that you experience throughout your whole process of actually doing something that is correct for you so basically you can live in it 24-7 <laughs> yeah uh, and you can actually make very small decisions using it so okay do I want to drink this tea right now or not you take it and you look okay what is it that I feel right now you put it back you look what do you feel uh, it can be used in conversations okay so what do I feel when I begin to speak this thing or when I begin to speak that, that thing right of course it is a kind of uh, advanced level I would say <laughs> because you have to really uh, get uh, to know the feeling itself 
before you can uh, really begin to kind of look for it in very small situations in your life. But it is a beginning. You can begin to measure these feelings of frustration and satisfaction in different activities whenever you, uh, you do something. So this is the first kind of level of what you can do. You just look, okay, when I'm satisfied or when I'm dissatisfied. Okay, now, now let's talk about these feelings of satisfaction and frustration a little bit more. Because for some people these uh, terms might be confusing. Of course, because they are not uh, full descriptions, they are just keywords. Uh, I would say that in my experience, uh, sacral satisfaction is more akin to physical joy that you experience. It is not uh, super uh, exciting, it is not super nervous, it doesn't make you jump up and down. Just a very calm but deep feeling of bliss, of bliss in my body. There are actually different types of sexual satisfaction depending on your channels, but okay, again, <laughs> because everybody has different channels, we have to kind of investigate this thing separately and to really do this it would require a basic reading to kind of give more keywords that would help a person to recognize his personal brand of sexual satisfaction and frustration also. But generally, uh, and it actually applies for everyone, there are just little kind of uh, nuances to it. Because generally, uh, sexual satisfaction in everyone is this, is, is this feeling of physical joy. And yes, there is also this element of satisfaction to it. While frustration, um, it may be hard to actually put into words at first. It, is really, it really becomes easier when you can measure them against each other. But uh, frustration, actually, what you may not even think about it as frustration. Because quite probably this is the feeling that you live uh, most of your life with. I didn't know I was frustrated before I, for the first time in my life, experienced the satisfaction consciously. And when I understood that, wow, I can feel this all the time, all the time. Well, compared to that, my whole previous life was really frustrating. But before that, I didn't know. And this feeling of frustration, uh, it is kind of an undertone of deadness in the body. Uh, yes, there is element of frustration to it also. Um, again, uh, different people might have different associ associations and words, they kind of link to this feeling. So we can basically go with the very basic polarity, I feel good, I feel bad, uh, which you can use to, in your experiment to measure against each other. Okay, do I feel good when I do this right now or do I feel bad? Do I feel better when I do this thing instead of the first one, or not? This will help you to kind of first notice the feeling, and then you can give your own descriptions to it. Okay, and of course there is this element of questions. Uh, you don't need them, per se. They are just one of the things you can kind of respond to. Uh, but of course they do have their place, they do exist. Uh, some people have sacral sounds, kind of uh, glottural uh-huh, uh-huh that go out <laughs> of them when they are asked. Uh, some people don't have them. Some people have just uh, flashes of satisfaction or frustration when they are asked something. Uh, you can try to look whether you have anything on this. Uh, if you don't have it, you might need some work to unblock it. I did need it. Uh, but nevertheless, I was able to actually right from the start uh, to notice the sexual satisfaction and frustration in activity without any questions. Again, it might take some time, but this is the experiment, right? Uh, of course, it also leads us to the question of generator strategy. What does it mean to respond? What does it mean to wait? What does it mean to initiate or not initiate? But I think that uh, this topic requires a separate video, which I intend to make also. I hope that helps. Have a good day.